Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. I just finished up filming the S2 McCarty 594 single cut video, which you can see back there. And while the PRS vibe is still fresh, I had a few minutes, thought I'd film this one real quick. Now, Paul Reed Smith guitar is obviously one of the biggest names in the business, super recognizable on stages all over the world, but why are they the preferred instrument for so many players? I have my own views and opinions, but to explore this thought further, I had to go straight to the source. You guys. I posted on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for your responses. Why do you love your PRS guitars? So here are the five most common answers you gave as to why PRS guitars are just better. They're not unhelpful. Let's get into it. The first point, and the one that came up by far the most often, is PRS's consistency and attention to detail. From the $5,000 US made core models to the more affordable S2 line, and even the modern import SE range, PRS has a reputation for an obsession with quality. That's something that every brand, some in particular, could stand to learn from. It's earned PRS dedicated, lifelong customers that are, at the very least, hesitant to pick up anything else because they've basically been spoiled. That level of consistent quality means a lot of PRS customers have no problems picking up a PRS site on scene because they trust that they're getting a good guitar without having to go down to a store to try and find a good one. And I love how the serial number is handwritten on the back of the headstock for all the US made Core and S2 models. Like a lot of guitars can feel impersonal. This adds a human element, like a person actually took care of this guitar. But consistency and attention to the minutia of what makes for a good guitar doesn't just apply to the quality control, but also to the actual design of the guitars themselves. When you start to inspect a PRS guitar closely, you can find all these little tweaks and details designed to make the guitar better. And that actually leads us nicely into our next point, originality and playability. PRS tends to do things differently. Take the headstock, for example. While everyone was out copying Gibson's three aside, PRS was out designing something that not only looks good, but is also functionally better. The nut angle isn't as extreme, so in general, they should add to better tuning stability. From a design standpoint, especially in guitar where consumers are generally resistant to deviations from established norms, that is not easy to do at all. The necks in particular also got a lot of shout outs, to be fair, they are super comfortable. Then while I was putting together my review of the S2, I noticed all these little things that PRS does that other brands just don't. The strap buttons are different. They're super wide, low, and flat. They actually feel like they'll secure a strap in place. The bridge and tailpiece design, similar in concept to a Tunematic, but with a modern, more angular design with brass pieces. Control cavity covers with the bevels facing out so they're easy to remove there's no chance they'll get stuck. Then there are very few brands that have developed new shapes that are universally accepted. Most guitars are derivations of shapes from the 50s, your Telecasters, your Stratocasters, your Les Pauls. I mean, you've got BC Rich, obviously they've got their own standout shapes, but you're generally not gonna find many Warlocks, for example, being rocked in jazz bands. I'm sure there are rebellious jazz players out there, but you get my point, it's very specialized. The Custom 24, meanwhile, introduced in the mid 80s, is relatively new compared to the previously mentioned ones, and today is one of the most iconic in all types of music, even the single cut. Yeah, a lawsuit was issued by Gibson because of the similarities, but it was eventually thrown out because, let's face it, it's got a different vibe. There's no direct telecopies, the Silver Sky was Okay, maybe more than a little bit of a shot in Fender's direction, but for the most part, PRS has a tendency to do their own thing, which is really awesome. And related to that originality is the aesthetic factor of PRS guitars, specifically how f***ing classy they are. The bird inlays are one of those immediately identifiable features. It's something that gets comments even from people who aren't guitar players, which is one key indicator that lets you know you've designed something really nice. The tops, even on SE or S2 models, but especially on the core line are insane. The figuring, the color selection, the quality of the stains. I mean, every NAM, the PRS booth is one of the must visit destinations. The guitars are straight works of art. Consistently, every year, they have some of the most visually striking standout guitars of the show and a lot of them. And again, the way that they look makes them both stand out and fit in at the same time regardless of what genre they're being applied to. They're modern, but classy at the same time across pretty much the entire line, which is just an incredible feat. Point four, the dude, Paul Reed Smith. This is kind of an interesting one. You guys kept mentioning the man himself as a reason you love the guitars. Specifically that he's the genius, yet slightly mad guitar crazy uncle that you wish he had. I think it goes to show, especially niche industries like guitar, 
personality is so important. And I'm not talking only the guitars, like PRSs have a very distinct feel to them, but like an actual person that you can see and relate to. And I think that Paul Reed Smith being this mad guitar scientist figure, rather than like a sentient leather jacket, for example, is a big reason why PRS gets so much leeway with the community. Like for example, the Gibson Custom Shop will release a $5,000 Les Paul, and you'll never hear the end of it. Meanwhile, PRS comes out with a $5,000 core model, everyone just accepts it and moves on. PRS, the closest thing that I can think of to the internet being the toxic internet, was the initial reaction to the Silver Sky. There were all the memes when it first came out, and let's face it, it may have some visual similarities to another well-known guitar, but now the general consensus seems to be the Silver Sky, it's a really good guitar. So yeah, Paul Reed Smith people just tend to like him, and they trust the man he knows what he's doing when it comes to guitars. And the last common point that came up, why PRS guitars are just better, and I'll admit, this one caught me off guard, it's because of that connection to early 2000s new metal. Didn't see that one coming. Although to be fair, looking at my channel demographics, I really should have. Now I had expected artists to come up, PRS has a fantastic roster of players, but I expected classic legends like Santana, one of the first signature artists, or like Mark Holcomb, a modern gent hero. His new 7-string SE is awesome, by the way. But no, it was the relationship to new metal that kept coming up. And yeah, it's true. Early 2000s, with the exception of like Korn, if you wanted to be a proper new metal band, standard procedure was you were taking your PRS guitar and you were plugging it into your most likely Mesa Dual Rec, or Triple Rec, if you were really someone. The PRS New Metal Lum List is pretty impressive. Linkin Park, Disturbed, Limp Biscuit, P.O.D., Seven Dust, Chevelle, Stained, Drowning Pool, it goes on and on. Even Jim Root from Slipknot, he's obviously known now for playing his Fenders, but he was playing a PRS on stage for a little bit too. Again just goes to emphasize the versatility. They look super classy, and you've got blues legends using them, but they were also at the forefront of low, heavy, drop tune music when that was the mainstream. For me personally, it was Mark Tremonti that got me looking into PRS guitars. I'm a huge fan of the Les Paul, something which I somehow managed to bring up in basically every single video. And when I looked up Alter Bridge videos, he was playing a Les Paul type guitar, but classier and more modern. Crazy figure top, bird inlays, and that's when I was like, I need one. Now, unfortunately, a PRS Core Tremonti in Well Blue is about four and a half grand, which is not a purchase I was able to justify at the time, or in fact, anytime soon, but it definitely got me into the brand. Actually, the only PRS I own right now is the Tremonti SE because it's just a great modern take on the single cut shape, not the standard, although that is fun. I'm talking about the one that used to be named the SE Tremonti Custom. I don't even consider it like a holdover guitar until I can get the much more expensive and pretty version. Right now I've got it in Open D, which is like guitar in easy mode, if you want it to be, and it's just a ton of fun. Yeah, anyways, many of the most influential metal players for a lot of us growing up used PRS as their guitars of choice. And because of that, PRS is in some ways directly responsible for us taking guitar seriously or even picking it up for the very first time. So those were your most common responses as to why PRS guitars are just better. I think the main takeaway from your answers is that PRS is as close to anything as we have right now to a total overall package. And what I mean by that is that PRS guitars are a great combination, a great symbiosis of form and function. There's enough vintage inspiration to appease fans of traditional guitars and enough modern improvements to appeal to the contemporary player. They look great without being gaudy, price at levels that are fair for the consistent quality you can expect from a guitar with Paul Reed Smith on the headstock. I think that just about sums up what you're saying. And at least from what I've tried, I'd tend to agree. I've played a number of stinkers from all the major brands, but 
I've never had a problem with any PRS. If you weren't that familiar with PRS before, do you feel like you now understand where fans are coming from? And if you were already an existing fan, do you agree with the list? Why, why not? Do you feel like anything was missed? You can let me know in the comments and follow me on the socials if you want to have your voice heard for the next one. I like doing these from time to time to get different perspectives, especially from the diehard fans about certain brands. Leading on from that, what brand do you want to see covered next? There's been a lot of shouts for Fender and for ESP, two giants of the industry, or maybe a focus on brands that are just regaining their footing in 2020, like Kramer or BC Rich. BC Rich in particular, I was really impressed with the Mockingbird Extreme from the new relaunch, but I don't know that much about the history or players of the brand, and I love to know why fans are so passionate about it. So that's my bias, but I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. It's the big red button down there, and it actually really massively helps me out. You can also hit the bell for notifications. That'll let you know whenever I upload a new video. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.